Welcome back everybody. Uh, it's been a, a significant break between uh, this video and the last one. Uh, I do apologize, but um, lots going on. Anyway, what I want to do today is uh, talk about a couple of things up front and then we're going to get into some more programming. Uh, but the one thing I want to do is say is really talk about the fact that we don't have a lot of time to get into specifically NoSQL databases. But um, I found a couple of things on the uh, MongoDB website. And first off, it's just a pretty good uh, article that's right in here. What is NoSQL? Okay, so if you want to know more about that, uh, then I strongly suggest you get in and have a look at this. It's um, mongodb.com, NoSQL explained. Okay, it's got some really good resources on here. Um, some really, really good stuff. Okay, so the other thing is, uh, there's also another really good uh, article on here. Let me see if I can find it. I was in there a little, here it is. So this is Six Rules of Thumb for MongoDB Schema Design, Part 1. Now what's interesting about this is that it was originally written uh, May 29th, 2014, but it was actually updated uh, very recently this summer on June 17th. And it actually talks about quite a lot of really interesting things. Okay, so for one, when we traditionally think about an SQL style or, or relational database, um, you know, we, we have one-to-one, one-to-many, all these sort of different ways of going about relating data to each other. And, you know, in the typical fashion, we would, if we had two things we want to relate, we would have two separate tables, we'd have foreign keys, we'd have primary keys, we'd have that, you know, the determination whether it's a one-to-many, one-to-one, whatever it may be. Okay, and in, in Mongo, there is actually relationships. It's just very different, right? And what this article goes on to talk about is um, things like modeling one to few. Okay, here's another one, one to many. And then as you go down, you get uh, one to squadrillions. Okay, so what this implies is that, um, you know, when it's a small amount of data that you're trying to actually um, handle in your application, you want to be in a one to few. Okay, so you're almost nesting uh, some data inside. But as your your project gets actually bigger or your application starts to expand, uh, or even right at the very beginning, you had a, a large sort of vision of a project, you want to get into the one of many. And even, you know, to go one order of magnitude higher, one, two squadrillions. Okay, so really that's what this article is about. Uh, and there, it looks like part two right here. Okay, and then part three. So uh, this one uh, wasn't updated recently, but maybe two years ago. And then this one here uh, is a little bit older. But if they haven't been updated, it's because the information still applies. Okay, I'm very doubtful it would be on Mongo's actual website as a resource if it wasn't still current today. Okay, so I, I strongly encourage you to get in and read this article. Uh, and for those of you following on Blackboard, I've already posted it in Blackboard. So get in there and have a look at this. It's really important stuff to know. Okay. Well, I've got my project open in um, this WebStorm IDE that I've switched to because of all the uh, difficulties I was having with Visual Studio. And there's a couple of things I do want to highlight. If you've actually, uh, if you're in here, there's one thing that you could do, and I do recommend you do it. I have changed one file name inside, uh, inside my file management system here. And this used to say um, routers or routes. And what I've done is I've actually changed that. And the way you do that is you go in and you select this box here. It says uh, refactor and you go to a rename. Okay. And I changed mine to controllers because this is still sort of a, an MVC par paradigm that we're trying to actually go with. 
And rotors in in this mean stack, the way we've originally been doing it, it's just been done with, um, uh, we, we're doing MVC, but it's not exactly apparent. So what I wanted to do is go in, because I can do it really well with this IDE, and I'm not so sure about it working uh, as well in Visual Studio. Either way, I've abandoned Visual Studio to, to work on this. And what I found with WebStorm is that I can actually go in here. It was called uh, Routes or Routers. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but you can go right click on there. You do a refactor and then you rename it. And here's the thing. Uh, what will happen is it will have a ripple effect or a cascading effect across all of your entire code. So all of those files in the background that uh, were originally called routes are now going to be updated to say controllers. So if you do it this way, it's not going to um, create a an error for you. And you can see the scope of this is throughout my entire project files. So everything is going to get changed. So I'm not going to do it, but if I if I change that to refactor or controllers one and then I hit refactor, it would name everything that currently was saying controllers or referencing controllers. It'll now be referencing controllers one. Clearly, I don't want to do that. It's just demonstration purposes only. But it's really, I think, an important thing to do, especially if you're going to continue to follow on, uh, follow along. You're going to want to see, uh, look at mine and compare it to yours anyway. So uh, if you're also downloading my stuff from GitHub, then uh, it's going to have the controllers file in there and not the uh, the routes. Okay, so one thing I wanted to get out of the way. Now there's another thing in my MongoDB. Uh, what I've had to do since the last time I recorded this, I ended up deleting my old database and starting over from scratch on this too, because I had some major malfunctions with my project and I ended up having to start over from scratch. Okay, so um, that's one of the one of the differences from last video to this video. Okay, and so mine is actually going to be called Cluster Zero. Uh, in the past, I think it said Georgian. Uh, so when I, when I look at this and I go into my collections, uh, my collections still stay, say tasks. Okay. And so not much really has changed with this, but there was a couple of things I do want to go over with you. If you're like me and you were migrating from, uh, visual studio over to, uh, WebStorm, I want to go to this thing over here. Uh, it's important that you understand this. Uh, and I don't know if I covered it in the last video, but it was causing me no end of problems. Okay. But I think I, you know, I've, I've fixed it now. One of the things you have to do is, uh, if you're doing this for the first time, you might actually see, uh, an IP address for your current location, but you actually have to set that to, uh, zero, 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 zero slash zero. And that is so that you can see it from anywhere that you're working. Uh, and because I went from one IDE to another, it was causing huge interference for me. So what you want to do is I, uh, I, because I've already done it and I think that you're going to want to go to edit, uh, and then there should be another button over here that'll say something to the effect of, uh, do you want to allow access from, um, allow client connections from anywhere or something like that. And I hit that and it basically what it did is it reset uh, my entire IP to this, uh, 4.4.4.4 slash zero. I don't know why I get, sorry, not four. I meant zeros, but four times. Anyway, you have to set that. That's what you ultimately want to do. And if you, you can look at mine, you, I don't have any other IP address, so that's fine. So that's something you definitely want to go in and change. Okay. Um, it, I think there's one other thing that maybe I wanted to show you. So in the clusters, um, when I go to my connection and if I try to connect with my, um, right here in the compass, okay. You may have an issue right here. If you're going to copy this, okay. Uh, and you put your, your password and all that kind of stuff in there, this, this part of your um, connection string actually has to be the name of your database. So for me, this should say ta um, tasks. 
Okay, so if I copy that, um, and then I go into, let's say, uh, let's go into where I have it. It's in my uh, globals, in my config. You can see it here. This should say tasks. Okay, and then I've got my uh, username and my password and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so this thing here, this uh, HPR9H is probably going to be different uh, for you than it is for me. But it'll be mongodb.net and it'll be tasks if you're following along. And it should be tasks if you're uh, in, if, if that's the name of your database. So if I look at my collections, okay, my collections... The task there is what the name of the collections are, or sorry, yeah, I guess of, of my co collections is called task and it's inside of cluster zero. Okay. So that's an important thing to, to distinguish. Um, I just wanted to make you aware of that just in case uh, you were getting stuck on some, some features as well. And that they were giving me a problem too. The next thing that I want to say is that um, I've actually renamed mine to uh part two so in my in my github uh if you're looking for this on github uh it's gonna actually be task manager underscore v2 okay but here in the ide it's gonna look like uh v1 okay it will actually say task manager and something I want you to know is uh, I just got this notification to do an update on NodeMon. I, I was running 2.0.4 and there's an update for 2.0.6. Okay, so uh, it's just a simple NPM I NodeMon and then you hit enter and then you just sit back and watch the show. Okay. So really quickly, uh, this is where we are with the uh, with the application. I'm in my local host. Okay. And in the IDE, I just typed in a, uh, where is it down in my console or terminal? Sorry. I just ran, um, nodemon. That's all I ran. And then you can see I'm getting this, uh, connected to MongoDB. Now, one of the issues that I was having before, which is why I wasn't connecting, uh, one of the one of the things that led to me breaking this, I couldn't get it connection. And it had everything to do with those four simple zeros with little decimals in between. Okay. Anyway, once I clean that up, I'm having no problems at all getting uh, back to my connection. Okay. So anyway, we're running and uh, let's go look at the application. So uh, where we left off is we had this task manager uh, I could add a task and I'll call this one uh, demo. Uh, it's a priority five. I'm going to save it. You can see it adds it right here. Okay. And the reason it's as a, uh, it's completed as false is because we've defaulted to make it default as complete to equal false. Okay. So if I want to go in and say, Hey, I've completed the task. I go to my edit. Okay, and now I'm saying, yep, it's completed. I checked the box and I hit save and you can see it's now changed to true. I can also go in and uh, change that to a priority three and it's now a priority three and it's completed anyway. Okay, and the last thing I can do is I can go in and actually uh, delete it. And as you saw there, we've got this uh, script in there that we wrote and that's when we included the jQuery earlier on. And uh, I think that was in the last video and I'm going to not cancel that and, or not, not accept that. So I'll, I'll cancel that. Okay. So let's see if we can go back to our, uh, in here and do a refresh of our database. Okay. And you're seeing it here. Yep. Um, make a new tutorial. Does that sync with this? This may not. Uh, sync with this. It's more than likely it's not because uh, I'm running this locally. I guess it is. Yeah, it is. So make a new tutorial and take a break. Okay, so um, it is. Sorry, I had a little brain fart, fart in there. So it is synchronizing with the database. Okay, let's do one more just to 
uh, just to make sure. Okay, we're gonna add a new task. We'll do um, make another video, uh, save. There it is. And let's go back into the database and do a refresh. Okay. And there it is. Make another video priority one. Okay. So we're good to go. Uh, everything is working very well, finally. Okay. And like I've said before, programming is 10% programming and 90% debugging. Okay, so another thing to point out is that if there's an interruption or something that uh, stops this from making that connection, this is why we put the uh, message in there. As long as I see that connected to Mongo, I know everything is going just fine. Okay, and that's that's an important thing that we want, you know, as long as we have that, uh, we're good to go. All right, we shouldn't be having any, any, any issues whatsoever. Okay. All right. So what do we want to do today? Today we want to actually get into doing some authentication. Okay. So that's really where we want to go uh, with this today. Okay. So what I hope to accomplish today in this video is to uh, deal with the register. And you can see right now we don't have anywhere for that to go and the login. And what we want to be able to do is also hide the tasks uh, from people that are anonymous users. So if you've already done um, .NET Core, uh, I think I did this in a video a week or two ago. Uh, same sort of idea, but doing it in .NET Core is going to be the easy way. This is going to be uh, the training wheels, um, the most difficult way we could possibly do it. I'm just kidding. Uh, it's not that bad. But, uh, you know, Microsoft makes it relatively simple, but this is the good thing about doing it in this uh, framework is that you get to really see in detail what's under the hood, what's causing these things to behave the way they are on screen. So what I want to be able to do is take this registration and login, move those over to the other side of the nav bar, and then uh, create an account, uh, have that persist in the database. And then once you've logged in, uh, then you can see the tasks. Okay, so until you're actually logged in or if you try to get in or you try to use the URL to kind of cheat your way in, um, it will still just redirect you to either login or uh, registration. Okay, so that's what I really hope to accomplish today in this video. A package that we're actually going to need is something called Passport. Okay, and that's what we're going to use for this. And I've just gone to the NPM um, website there, and it's basically uh, npmjs.com package passport. Okay, and we're gonna install this, and that's what we're gonna use, but something to be aware of, uh, let's look at the stats on this. So uh, 937, almost 940,000 downloads uh, weekly with this and you can see how it's trending. It's actually trending up a lot more people doing these. Uh, and as of today or this week, um, ending yesterday, it was almost 938,000 downloads. Okay. Anyway, the good thing is there's a readme file on there. Uh, there's the install, some information about using it, but what we're going to talk about in ours is something called strategies. Okay. Uh, and it's further explained in here. Um, what else is in here? Some, yeah, some more information. So Passport has a comprehensive set of over 480 authentication strategies covering social networking, enterprise integration, API services, and more. Okay. So if you look at all these different things here, right, here's the, um, Google, uh, OAuth, um, Google Open ID, Twitter, Facebook, um, what else? Any, some some other stuff in there. Okay, so I, I, I've posted that in my Blackboard uh, for people, but uh, if you're following along, it's right here in the NPM. If you are super keen and you decide to actually go in here and read this, please pay particular attention to sessions. Okay, read through and understand that. And don't ignore this middleware. Okay, just don't 
don't skip that, okay? It's an important thing to uh, be at, at least be familiar with, uh, or at least know what's out there. Middleware is not something that gets talked about uh, very often, uh, but it is an important thing, and it, it might be a good idea just to go out and do a little bit of research on your own as to what middleware is. Okay, so um, have a read at those and make sure that, um, you know, and other than that, just follow along in the video. So there are four packages that I need to install with this, okay? And uh, what I'll do is right away, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit the control C and terminate this because I'm actually, uh, I'm actually running it right now. And this is your typical NPM I install kind of a thing, but because I have four packages, I could technically go and install all four separately one at a time, but I'm actually able to do this MPM I for install, and I can do password, uh, passport, sorry. Um, okay. Now if I space them out, I can actually, uh, uh, do all of them simultaneously. Okay. So the first one is passport. I'm going to space. The next one is passport and dash local. Now, the one thing you have to do is spell this stuff properly. Do a space. Okay. Dash local dash mongoose. Okay. And a space and then express dash session. Now, and I also want minus minus save. Okay. So before I hit the enter, that's going to be uh, NPM. I passport. Don't forget the space now. Passport uh, dash local. Passport dash local dash mongoose. And a space and then express dash session space and then dash dash save and I'm going to hit enter. Okay. A note about this save. The only reason I've done the dash dash save, I don't need to do that, but the issue is if uh, any of you go onto my GitHub and you download this, it's not going to know. So uh, I'm only putting the dash dash save for the sake of people uh, downloading it from GitHub and that's it. Okay. Uh, let's see. I found these five vulnerabilities, one low, one moderate, three high. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Okay. Uh, let's just move on. Okay. So they're, they're, uh, installed. And the way we confirm that they were installed is we can just go into uh, package.json. Okay. And here it is. Okay. We've got uh, passport local. Uh, mongoose passport local passport and uh, express session right here okay so uh, we're in good shape and I'm just gonna restart it with uh, node mon and you can see this uh, connected to mongodb which is uh, if you recall comes from this line or sorry right here okay and that's in our apps.js Okay, so let's go to here, over to here, and everything seems to be in proper working order. That's good. Let's begin with uh, the registration and the login pages. So I guess the first thing I want to do is go to my views folder, and I'm going to create two new uh, views, and this is going to be register.hbs. Uh, okay. And let's see what this says. Do you want to add the following file to Git? Yeah, sure. Okay. And the other thing I need to do is, uh, cause it's down here into views. I'm going to actually now go and do my login dot H B S. And this one is asking me about GitHub as well. So let's start with uh, register first. Okay. We got a lot to do with register. Okay. This is for the most part, just straight HTML stuff. 
Okay, so uh, I'm going to just go through as fast as I can, type it out. You can follow it along. Um, I don't imagine I'll be saying too much. Here I'm just going to copy everything over to login, dump it in, and then do some editing. And don't worry, I'm going to post this on uh, GitHub as well as in uh, Blackboard. Let's go over to the layout file. Okay, and you'll notice here we've got uh, register already in here and log in. Uh, we did that, I think, on the first video, but we have to change those to uh, so that we can navigate to them. So the first one is register. Okay, and obviously it must be spelled identical. Okay, and then same thing for log in. Okay, and hopefully I just didn't make a spelling mistake. Okay, so clearly if we go in here, uh, right now we should get an error. Okay, so for either register or login, we should probably get a, oh, you know what? I haven't actually turned it on. So let's go in. Oh, I'm, I'm turned on uh, to my local, but I, I've got nowhere to go. I hit register um, or even login. I've got nowhere to go. Sorry, I had to refresh this for a minute there. Okay, uh, I was expecting to get the 404 because I actually don't have a route. Okay, so there's nothing in the controller. So if I go over to my, um, into my index, my controller, uh, where's that controllers index? If I go into that and just above my um, export routes, uh, what I'm gonna do is let's go with um, get, sorry, get, register okay and then we'll we'll need another one another get which is going to be uh get get login okay so really simple it's it's very similar to what we've already been doing in the the above okay in fact uh no i'm, I'm not going to bother copy and paste in that one but it's just um router dot get Okay, and in here, uh, this is just review stuff that we've done a bunch of times. Okay, am I always paranoid about the spelling piece? Because it's an important thing, and if you get that wrong, you're going to be in trouble. Okay, so you can see here with the next. And the one thing I do like about this particular IDE is that it's uh, it's got a really good IntelliSense, but you have to be careful because it throws in this extra quotation every once in a while. So after my Lambda, uh, what I want to do is have this here. And then all we're doing is just, uh, you know, rendering right there. And what's the, what's the string that we want? Well, it's a uh, register. Okay. Okay, I want to confirm the spelling because if I don't, uh, I'm going to be in deep trouble again. And I don't like that. Don't like wasting my time chasing spelling mistakes. So R I G I S T E R. Good. All right. So for the next one, uh, very similar, but it's login. Okay. 
Okay, good. Now let me hit the save. Okay, and you can see that I'm still connected to my Mongo down at the bottom. And I'll go out here, I'll do a refresh, and look at that. Okay, so a couple of things I want to highlight about this. Uh, first and foremost is uh, why is it that I've got uh, all these different things, right? Like why do I have username, password, and confirm? And I've got this message down here with a link to login. And that is because when we when we created these, uh, here it is right here, okay? We created a button. We have this message that says already have an account, which is right here. And then from that, we've got this login uh, reference right here, okay? Which navigates us back to here. Okay, and now if we're in login, we should see a thing that says need access. So if we go back and let's try that, and there you see it. Okay, need access. And if you need access and you don't have an account, well then you can just navigate back to uh, register or login. So these buttons are functioning now. Okay, uh, the other thing is uh, this is, you know, create your account, create your password, and then confirm your password, and then do the registration, okay? And then uh, last thing I want to touch on is in here, I've got this regular expression, which defines the rules of your password. Okay, so um, eight characters, um, uh, alphanumeric, capital, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay, so clearly um, all, you, all we've done is get. Okay, so if I do something like this, I don't know, register. Obviously, I, I'm not matching the format, um, whatever. I, I don't even know what the, but I should technically get a 404 if this was done properly um, because I don't have actually a post. Okay, so if I just say Tom, um, I don't know if that's even enough. Still not enough, I'll do a second one and a second one. Yeah, so I don't have a post. Okay, so we've got to get, but we don't have any posts. Like we need to send this somewhere. Um, this information has to be stored somewhere in a database. Since we um, need to be able to store this somewhere, this is obviously gonna go into our models. And what I can do is I can go to my models folder and do new, um, a new JavaScript file. And this is going to be called user uh, with an S, users. All right, let me think about that. Actually, that should be user, singular, lowercase. And uh, let's hit enter. Yeah, eventually I will hit that, put that into uh, GitHub. Okay, so clearly now we have to make the model of what we what we want to have uh, in terms of what our users are supposed to look like and, and with their credentials, which is their username uh, or their login and their passwords. Password. I've opened up our other model, uh, tasks. Okay, and just really quickly look at this. We've got, uh, we have to reference Mongoose. Okay, and then we're going to set up this Mongoose schema. And you can see from the last time we've got name, we've got complete, and we have priority. So it's going to be relatively simple, similar to that, uh, but it's going to be appropriate to our user uh, login credentials. Well, let's actually go in and just do a very generic class. Okay, so const um, const mongoose is going to be required. Oops. Sorry. Um, you don't know why I put that in there, but I don't need it. Okay, so uh, const mongoose required. Uh, and then we're going to do const user equals new. And it's going to be mongoose dot schema yeah just like that ok 
Okay, and... Ah, uh, sorry. Now, this is going to be... Okay, a string. And password. Uh, that, too, will also be a string. Okay, not really much to that. We just now need to... Um, make this public, right? Now, something I want to mention if uh, you're typing in there, this IntelliSense stuff is going to throw that in there. So uh, the name, it's kind of shadowed a little bit. It's a, an off gray color. It doesn't, it's not, you, you don't need to type in the word name. Uh, it's kind of a prompt that it's uh, adding it in there. So just don't type in, it's going to naturally arrive. Just kind of go with it, okay? Okay, and I'm gonna save that. Remember in the beginning, we did the uh, NPM install on a bunch of uh, passport um, uh, items, uh, packages. Well, now we're gonna actually use one of them at least. So this is gonna be const, const, and we're gonna call this PLM, and that's gonna stand for, oops, uh, re equals, require, and this is going to be uh, passport local mongoose. Okay, that's what PLM is going to stand for. This is going to be the class for user management. Okay, and that's what this PLM is going to do. This is what it's going to tell mongoose. Because this is not a regular model, we're going to make this special class intended for uh, user management. Okay, so what we're going to do is say user, and it's going to be a plugin. Okay, and of course that plugin is going to be PLM. Okay. Uh, yep. So if we actually go here to the um, uh, passport local mongoose in the uh, npmjs.com, and we go through and we start to look at this. Uh, we wanna make sure um, right down here on the usage. So basically our schema looks almost identical to this. Um, the only difference is right now, I'm having one issue with this uh, plugin. So I'm actually gonna just take that whole line, uh, take that, copy it, and I'm gonna put it into my code. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't really like what's going on but um it's it's saying that uh this is not what's the error here uh create a method plugin uh rename reference uh anyway this is supposed to be picking it up this is part of the uh actually part of this um plugin okay so i'm so far everything is looking good but i have a feeling we're going to have to come back to this and just to be safe if i have to i'll come back and redo that install uh, or at the very least just reconfirm that this uh, has been installed but if you we did before in the past if you just look at passport local mongoose in the uh, where is it i closed it uh, in our um, Or, ah, right there, JSON. Okay, so there it is. Uh, passport local mongoose. It's there. So we should actually be picking up anything that's associated with that. Um, but for now, we're going to have to wait and see until we get a little further. A little bit uh, down in the document, you've got these uh, serial, serialized user. Um, so this kind of stuff we're going to be getting into as well. We're going to need this. 
Okay, uh, so that it says you should configure your passport local as directed in the passport guide. Yeah, okay. So we will have to get into this as well. Okay, but if you go to that website, you'll have a, a really good example of what the code is supposed to be uh, and follow along, of course. I'm back in my apps.js and uh, right above the app express. Okay. So when we're doing this, it's, you know, somewhere around line 13, I don't know what it'll be for you, but we're going to do, um, uh, references, uh, for authentication and authorization. So I'll put auth to cover off both words. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is const const passport is going to be, uh, require and that's going to be uh, passport right there. Okay. And the next one will be uh, const a session. Okay. And this one is express session. Okay, and then we got one more. This one's a little bit different. Um, it's going to be called local strategy. Strategy. Okay, I don't need two S's. Local strategy. And that is a little bit of a different one because it's, um, it's calling an object from inside of local, uh, passport local. Okay, so, okay, require... And this one is going to be passport. There it is local. Okay. And then we go outside of that and we do dot strategy. Okay. So now after, uh, much further down after our, uh, database connection, we're going to go down and, uh, start doing some implementation of, uh, passport. So that's going to be, uh, where do we have? Probably somewhere around here is a good, good spot for that. Okay. Let me give myself some space. So I've given myself some room and I'm going to start with my comments first. So we're going to do this passport, uh, initialization. And then I think after that, uh, what are we going to do? What's the next step that we're going to want to try and do? Okay. I've put a note in on what our next step is going to be, and that is going to be app dot use and a bracket session. Okay. And it looks like, yep, their session, uh, option. Okay. Um, how's this going to go? Cause this is one of those funny looking shady things. Um, yeah, you see when I hit the, uh, the bracket there, that word option showed up. I just want to be careful when I'm showing this that uh, it doesn't mess you up and that you're not running around looking for the word option or understanding why I'm trying to, why did I type in option? I didn't actually type that. So the first thing we need is a secret. Okay. And I'm, I'm just going to put in whatever the heck I want here. And I'm going to say, um, uh, how about this task manager secret? Okay, just task manager secret, and that should have been uh, should have been in the uh, quotation, the single quote, and a comma, and the next line is going to be uh, resave, and we'll set that to true, comma, and then the last thing is going to be this save, sorry, uh, save uninit uh, uninitialized. Okay, in that we're going to set to uh, false. Okay, and we're good there. So I'll go ahead and save that. Now, if you're actually curious about what all this stuff is, then I would uh, I would say go into where are we? Not um, we want express section. Uh, express. I think hyphen session. Let's see if that's it. Yeah. Uh, so when you get to options, uh, let's see down here. 
just looking for in the documentation. Okay, so there's resave, rolling. Okay, this here, uh, save uninitialized. And there's a line in here that actually talks about uh, secret required option. There it is, secret required option. Okay, and it's this is uh, the secret used to sign the session ID cookie. Okay, so it is a required option. But go in here and look at the documentation. This is all under the express uh, session in uh, in the site that we've been in. Okay, so the next step is to set up Passport. Okay, and that's just going to be app dot uh, use, and it's a it should be a method call. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, use. Uh, and instead of passport, like the previous one, this one's going to, or a uh, session, this will be passport. Okay. And then this will be dot, uh, there it is. I N initialize. Okay. And that is a method. So we'll go outside and this one is app dot use. Um, again, this inside will be passport and dot session. Okay, and that too is a method call. And the next next step is uh, the link to passport to our user model. Okay, and this isn't very difficult either. This is just a const const user equals require. Okay, and it's just a path that we need to put in there. So dot uh, models uh, users.js. Okay. And the next line there is so passport dot use in the method and it's going to be user or you, yeah, user dot create. I'm looking for create. Okay. It's create strategy is what we're looking for way down in the S's. There it is. Create strategy right here. Okay. And, uh, one thing that's a little bit odd. Um, I may not actually need this particular line right here. Uh, I'm not going to touch it yet, but I was just thinking it cause I'm not referencing it. But uh, for now, I'm going to leave it. Actually, what I'll do, I'm going to comment that out just in case. Okay, it, it's still going to be there, but so far I haven't really, um, I haven't referenced it. So the next thing I want to do, uh, the fourth thing, is um, set up uh, passport to read, write. Um, user data to the session object. Okay. And then finally, we're going to do uh, passport dot serialize user. And that will be a uh, user dot serialize. Um, interesting. It's not picking it up in the telesense, but uh, serial. Serialize user. Uh, that should be a method call. And then this one here is going to be uh, passport again. And this is going to be deserialize. Yeah, that one there. And again, it's going to be user. Oops. Uh, user dot deserialize. I'm surprised it's not actually picking it up. That's not 
I'm sub oh, because I was using a comma instead of a period. So it should be uh, serialize. Uh, serialize user right there. Okay, got to be careful, right? Maybe I should stop saying uh, coding is 10% uh, coding and 90% debugging. It should be 90% uh, misspelling. So I'm in my uh, index uh, controller. And, uh, you know, what we've done before is we've actually done two gets. So I think now it's time we're going to go uh, post uh, register. Okay, and uh, the way we're going to do that is just, we've, we've done this so many times before now already. So I'm wondering, is there something I can go up there and copy, or am I going to have to do this the painful way? Looks like I'm going to have to do it the painful way for this one. Uh, so, so router.post and register. A comma, and this is, yeah, where is it? Now, like I said before, I don't actually have to do the uh, the next, but it's just kind of part of its IntelliSense. So I usually I've been going with it anyway. Okay, now uh, put a comment in there. Okay. Okay, so the user model, use the user model with Passport to try a new user. Passport local mongoose will start and has Password. Okay, uh, actually, uh, I, I should say, um, not start. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's actually with salt and hash, the password. Okay, so I... Hopefully you're already familiar with uh, salt. Doesn't matter. Anyway, um, let's keep going. Uh, register. One challenge that I've got right now is uh, there's no reference to this right now. There's no reference to this user. So I actually have to go in and create that reference to that user right now. So I'm actually going to go up um, to just below line four there and I'll put a note in there. Uh, reference uh, for auth. Okay. And this is going to be const passport. It's going to equal required uh, passport oops that should be the other brackets again passport okay and then again uh, const user to reference that other um, time when we used uh, user require and this one is uh, model there models and user okay. there and to save that and then let's go back down where we were and we'll see that uh, we're now actually referencing that okay so I, I didn't have to spend a lot of time talking to go through that because we've kind of gone through this uh the same post process in previous videos and it's starting to get a little bit of uh you know wash rinse repeat just having uh done a really quick review of that i realized down on my line 43 i've got one extra round bracket 
I'm going to control X that and it actually needs to go. Uh, it looks like right here to close this out right there. Okay. So up on line 31, that would be in front of the required body password. Okay. Um, I'm going to save that and I'm kind of interested in trying this out. I don't know what kind of error I'm going to get at the moment, but why don't we try? Um, sure. We'll go with, we'll go with that. Uh, capital A, B, C, one, two, three, um, exclamation, exclamation. Okay. A, B, C, one, two, three. Let's see what happens. Interesting. I am not going to save this. Not going to save this. Okay. Let's just see. Well, everything seems to have worked out. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm somewhat encouraged. I didn't break anything. Okay. The true test is yet to come. Uh, what we're going to need to do is actually head into here. Okay. Uh, let's see if I go into, is there a refresh anywhere? Okay. If I go into tasks, I'm looking at, oh, okay, there it is. Okay. So we, we seem to have passed the true test. Okay. So what's going on in here right now is I actually have this user's collection now. Okay. So let me click on that and see if it gives us any, uh, encouraging result. Okay. And doesn't seem to want to let me click on that and get out some information other than the fact that it's got one document. Okay. So, um, I I'm actually quite encouraged by that. Okay. So I've actually gone out to, uh, clusters collections. You can see I've got tasks here and I've got users now and awesome. You can see right here that, um, it's created my, uh, my database for my users. So my username is Tom Morazzo. I'm salted with this big, long, gigantic, uh, salt. And then this hash right here. Okay. So uh, extremely encouraged by that actually working out only because I've been sitting at my computer for 14 and a half hours and I'm a little tired anyway. Uh, let's, let's keep going. Cause I still want to get the login done if I can. Okay. Just to be clear, one little quick review. Uh, we wrote the post handler first. Okay. But then we couldn't reference it. I should have put the references in first up here. Okay. So if you're following along, uh, make sure you, you get that in order before you, uh, do the post. Okay. So obviously now we're going to get into the post for the login and we got a couple of different scenarios. Okay. So if their login is valid, great. What if their login is invalid? Okay. And then uh, a couple of things to consider is the different strategy that we're going to use. Uh, we do have to authenticate in here and we're going to use this local strategy. And I kind of touched on the strategies that you would probably want to read about in the, um, in the documentation that we showed. But uh, let's just kind of look at the code here and just go with uh, post the login, not logging. Okay. Post the login. So router. Okay. And this one is actually going to be a dot post. Okay. It's going to be slightly modified, um, but that's okay. Uh, so log in. I was hoping it was going to pick it up. Uh, and then go, so we're going to use passport right away in this one, because this is where we're going to authenticate. Okay. And in that authentication is where we're going to have the, uh, strategy. You can see right here, the string, uh, and that's going to be uh, local. Now you see where the little IntelliSense thing got picked up there. Uh, let me see. So local, and then, um, I guess, yeah, just like that. 
So if they successfully log in, then we want to make sure that we do a something called a uh, success. Uh, huh, didn't pop up. Uh, a success redirect. Okay, and this is going to be a uh, user. Well, that didn't make very much sense what I just said. I'm trying to get them to go to a location. Okay, so what this is going to actually be is uh, I want to reroute them to uh, tasks. Okay, and if they have a failure, um, I'm surprised it's not picking it up. Uh, okay, the failure redirect is going to have them just go to uh, right back to login. Okay. Oh, and I think I'm missing a comma right here. Okay, so if they do fail, what's going to happen is they're going to get redirected back up to the uh, into the get. Okay, now I've got one more that I've got to do, and that's again going to be a failure message. Okay, and that's going to be uh, invalid. Sorry, invalid login so i think we could probably uh, test this out okay so i'm going to go to my uh, login and i'm just going to put something incorrect um a b c and let's just see what happens nothing really happened there Which is kind of what we said anyway, because right here we're saying, okay, if you if you fail to log in, then just take us right back to the login right here on this line. Okay, so let's see. Um, I think I was... Um, okay, uh, A, B, C, one, two, three. Okay, and let's see what happens. There you go. It brought us right back to task manager. So to tasks which is uh, where we are over here. We said if it's successful, then bring us to tasks. Okay, the last thing we got to do is with this failure message. Okay, so we've handled the login, we've handled the tasks. Now we got to deal with this, uh, this failure problem. Okay, so if we go back to uh, a little bit at the top here, um, what we're going to do is right after this bracket, um, Yes, right in here. This is where we're going to do this. So I'm going to put some comments in there first. So the first comment is going to be um, this here. So check for invalid login message and pass to the view to display. Next thing I want to do is right after that is clear the message session. And then finally, I want to Pass the local message variable to the view display. Now, how do I go about doing those? So let's do these one at a time. We got to create this variable. Let messages messages equals required um, dot session dot oops sorry not comma dot message. It's messages actually. Uh, and this is uh, pipe or or, okay? And if it's empty, fine. Uh, and then the next thing is we're gonna do uh, require dot session here, this session uh, messages. Okay, and that's gonna be equal to, it's basically gonna be empty. Okay, and then the last thing is going to be this. Uh, what we want to do is actually just do an update. Let me take that space out. We kind of just want to update this render first. Okay, so right after the login, what we want to do uh, is actually do uh, this JSON. I'll move the uh, so you can see it. So messages messages and it's json so it's a colon uh messages 
okay and yeah the brackets all look fine so i'll go ahead and save that so if we really if we do get this uh error message which we're bound to happen uh, what we want to make sure that we do is uh, make it obvious to the user. So we're going to output this uh, to red. So I'm going to go back into my uh, login dot handlebars, and right above my uh, method, uh, my form post here, method post. What I'm going to do is one of these uh, handlebars uh, ifs. Okay, so it's if. Okay, and then uh, in brackets message messages and then it should be okay so you see that it actually finished off the uh, if statement for me so in here i'll tab over one uh, and this is going to be a div class and that is going to be alert okay and then uh, uh, alert danger okay and close that off and then here we get back to the handlebars again. Okay, and inside the handlebars, seems like it added an extra one. We're gonna say messages. Okay, and that should do the trick. I got one extra in here. Okay, looks balanced. And that's a mistake there. There should be no round brackets in our if save that and we're gonna have to test this out let's actually make one more little slight modification before we test this out so after the div okay we've gone to if uh i think we're gonna do uh else okay and what we're gonna do is a uh div class and that's going to be uh, alert and it's actually alert info now alert info because that color is actually going to default to blue okay and then uh, let's go with please enter your credentials Okay, please enter your credentials. Uh, that should do it. Okay, save. Now let's go give this a test. Okay, so uh, let's do a login. Uh, I'm gonna do Tom, uh, blah, 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 login. Okay, so I got this invalid login right now. Okay. Um, so now if I just click on the login, uh, tab right there now you can see it turned to blue and says please enter your login credentials so I can go to Tom and there and now I'm back in okay I think actually we're doing really well the only uh, issue right now is that nothing is actually uh, secure whatsoever Okay, so if I if I hit the log login, I've just gone right to login, right? Um, even if I just do this, okay, I I didn't log in um, at all, but I went to tasks. So as an anonymous user right now, I can actually see everything. Okay, so what I do want to do is start implementing a little bit of security, uh, so that. Uh, it ensures that if you're not logged in or registered, then you can't get in there and see any of this stuff. You certainly shouldn't be able to add new tasks if you're an anonymous user. Uh, so if you are actually logged in uh, and you're, you've got access to the tasks, then what you should be seeing is the actual log out button. So at this moment, uh, you know, we're in great shape, but we still have a lot of things that we have to, to fix. Okay. The next thing I'm actually going to have to do is now use, uh, I'm going to make, have to make a reference to passport and the place I'm going to do that is in my dot, uh, tasks, tasks.js. Okay. And by making that reference, uh, we're going to use it very shortly. 
so I'm just adding this comment, uh, use passport to check our authentication. Okay. So it's just a constant passport require passport. And of course, make sure you get the right type of brackets. And next, what I want to do is um, do, do an authentication check function to be called for each route. Okay, so I'm going to create this function uh, and then we're going to call it throughout all of our get and our post um, routes. And it's an important thing that we're going to do here because um, we, we want to make sure that we actually do capture uh, all of the, the get functions and the post because we don't want to allow somebody uh, to go to a third party type of website and then start doing it injections of tasks into our website by using these other tools. So we actually do have to protect it. And so what we'll do is we're going to create this function, uh, which is a very simple function. And uh, then we're just going to go to each one of our routes in this file, and then we're going to call it. Okay, we're just going to combine it in with our uh, within our um, gets and our posts. Okay, so uh, there's going to be a couple conditions. So if the user has uh, logged in, uh, then call next. Okay, and it'll just allow them to uh, execute their or to continue executing what they were doing. Okay, and if not, what I want to do is send them right back to the um login screen that's what i want that's where i want them to go if they don't properly log in then they should be redirected back to the login now this is uh this is authenticated uh it is a method call and it comes from passport okay so uh that's why i'm i'm using this particular method here and then i'm returning next now uh i should edit this I know it's not going to work because is authenticated is a method and so is next. Okay. But we'll just keep going. I'll come back and fix that in a second. So keep in mind, uh, with what I'm trying to achieve is that let's say you're, you're, uh, you're not logged in and I want to restrict what you can actually see, uh, until you become authenticated. Uh, and you, I, I can confirm that you're already logged in. So, uh, once you try to get in and if your login fails, then I want you to be redirected like that on line 19. I want you to be redirected back to um, the login screen. And then if you actually uh, are logged in successfully, if you've been authenticated, then you can have access to the things that I want you to have access to. And as you can see here that uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to go to all of my posts and uh, get methods. And I'm going to just uh, call that function. Now, make sure that when you're putting in the is logged in, that you're putting it in uh, right after the route and then adding the comma. So don't forget the comma because uh, what will happen is you'll end up, um, it'll cause a disconnection um, to your Mongo because it'll be an error. So it's looking for those errors. Okay. And I'm sure some of you are wondering, okay, when am I going to get in there and fix the, uh, uh, those two other issues, those two method calls, the next in the, uh, is authenticated. I'll get in there. I'm just making sure I can put all these in here first. And this looks like a good time to get in and start changing those, those items there. So change that to, um, a method call. And then of course, uh, what you're going to see is that if I don't call that other method, uh, it actually doesn't work. So the is authenticated. It has to be a method call. Okay. So you can see here that it's still allowing me to do it, uh, because I haven't actually converted that into a method. So I'll go back into the system and test it all out now. Okay, so if I'm not logged in 
and I go to look at tasks, then I'm getting rerouted back to exactly where I wanted to be uh, routed. Okay, which is I try to go to tasks, doesn't let me, I don't have the authentication to go in or the authority to go in. So now I'm redirected. Okay, so that worked out really well. Make sure you're putting in your is logged in and all of your post and your get um, uh, routes. Okay, you have to do this. Okay, and you can see here that uh, again, I'm just navigating back to what is next in the line. And if you're authenticated, you go to what you want to see. And if you're if you're not, then you go back to the login page. It's that simple. Okay. So definitely something I want to do is actually uh, I want to try to get around that through the URL. So I'm going to go into tasks and add just to see if I can add a task just to make sure that it okay. So you're seeing that it's actually uh, functioning the way uh, it should be. Okay. So let's go back and confirm that everything is as it should be with, you know, I've got all my is logged in uh, method calls in each of the get in the post. Something that I need to do now is update my nav bar because you can see in my nav bar, I don't actually have a logout. Okay. So once I'm logged in, the only way to get out of it is just to terminate the session. Okay, so now I have to start thinking about uh, how do I log out once I'm in and I am authenticated. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just add uh, an update into my layout.hbs. And uh, really I'm just gonna copy and paste the, the login and I'm gonna cluster that uh, with my uh, tasks because once my tasks are, uh, I'm actually logged in, I should be able to visibly see my tasks um, and then I'm going to want to log out. Okay. So all I'm going to do is just, uh, copy and paste that in and change it to log out. Okay. And of course, uh, I haven't built the view, but I also haven't built a route yet either. Okay. So that's all I'm doing is I'm putting that into the URL at this point. Okay. So if we refresh this, uh, you can see now I've got a log out button and I should get a 404. Okay, because I haven't done any routing or any views or anything like that yet. And the actual view isn't really a view. The view is just going to send me right back to login. Okay, um, that's really what the plan is for this. So let's go to uh, my index router or controller. Okay, and I'm going to write this uh, uh, method down here in the bottom or this uh, get logout. Okay, and it's a very simple function. Okay, and of course you need to spell it right, and I don't think I'm spelling it right here, but I'll 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 fix that. So it's a get, and it's log out. Okay, this is, you know, very repetitive what we're doing with these routes. Okay, and our typical three uh, parameters in here. R E Q R E S and should be next. Okay, do our little lambda. Do a required dot logout. And this is an actual method call. Okay, this is part of the passport. Uh, this is not my method, it's I'm calling the logout method. Now, once I call this method, then what? Okay, so think about that for a second. I'm, I'm logged out and then what? Now, typically what happens is you end up getting redirected back to log in. If I wanna get back in, I'm gonna to have to be logged back in and redirected to log in. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do here. And I'll just add this little note, uh, call passport built-in logout method. And of course, that always helps to spell things properly so that you lose your connection, you can get it back. So now we go in, uh, I'm, I'm going to log in with my, uh, my actual account. 
which was capital A, B, C, one, two, three, exclamation, exclamation. And now when, you know, I've got normal access to everything on the site. And now if I log out, it sends me right back to my login screen, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. So we're in awesome shape right now. So one thing that we should probably do, uh, there's an expected behavior is that when you're actually logged in, uh, that you can actually see your, uh, your username in there. And even here, if you look at, um, this, I'm, I'm actually logged in under the, the YouTube channel, uh, as an example here, or even if I'm in, if I go to my, um, am I in blackboard? Uh, I was in blackboard. Um, Okay, and I'll go into Blackboard and you'll see um, eventually. Ah, it doesn't want to let me in. It must hate me. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You get the point. Every time you log in, you're going to see your actual login uh, credentials to the side. So let's let's see if we can go in and do that too. Now, before I do that, there's one thing I want to do, and that's uh, I want to make a change in my layout uh, to tasks, because what I want to do is um, when you're actually logged out, uh, I want that thing to disappear. I don't want it to be visible to you. And we're just going to use um, this handlebar syntax. OK, so uh, right above that, it'll be. Uh, let's see if it. All right. There it is. So uh, I'm going to just basically put my whole entire task inside of here. And I'm just going to say if I'm passing this user object, uh, if user, then show it. OK, so let's let's test this out and let's see what happens. OK, so I go to the actual uh, site uh, should update. Let me am I logged in? Um, no, if I refresh that, I'm not, you see here, it disappeared. Okay. Cause I'm, I'm not actually logged in. It did, it did in fact disappear. So let's try and log in. It's actually refreshing in the background. So let's try this. And let's see if it comes back. Okay. It didn't come back because we're not done the actual uh, statement yet. Okay, before I fix that, there are a couple things I still want to do. I do want to actually change around uh, everything that's going on in here. Okay, so uh, I want to create two um, uh, ULs because uh, I want to break them up between registration and login and then everything else. Okay, so uh, first thing I'm going to actually do is uh, I think what I'll do, because I'm good with about and tasks actually being together. Um, but what I want to actually do is, uh, copy this UL. Okay. And I'm going to close out this, this UL right here. Okay. And then above it, I'm actually going to, uh, I'm actually going to create another line here. Okay. And for this one here, I'm going to update this to say, uh, nav bar nav, but I'm going to say, uh, uh, my two okay and that should uh, hopefully push it far over to the right side now the next thing i want to do here is uh, i want to do another um uh, if okay i i guess i could have just copied it um it's going to be the same exact line actually uh user okay uh, i don't need the extra one uh so i'll take this and I need to uh, put that just below here. Let's see if I've got that in the right spot. Sorry, not there. Uh, right above, right here, uh, under my logout. Okay, so I'm actually isolating register and login. Okay. Okay, and one more thing I want to do is I want to I want to display. Uh, the user's username. Okay, so that's going to be an li uh, class, and that will be equal to uh, nav uh, nav item. Okay, I'll close that out. 
and in here this is going to just be a class and that's going to be uh, nav link right there okay i'll close this out and we're going to go with this uh, hbs and that's going to be uh, hashtag user dot user name okay we'll close that okay so sorry a little bit of error there so i don't need that the uh number okay and close that out so i've got user and username okay i'm just checking to see if everything looks okay okay so just after my logout you see i've got the uh the if and I think what I'll do is I'll move it down after login. Okay. And then here I'm going to do an actual, uh, else, uh, okay. And I'm just confirming. Okay. That's good. Right after I should go into register and log in. Okay. Let's just go and have a look and make sure there's no major, major blunders or errors. Okay. So. A uh, couple of things. Uh, my bars have not been pushed over to the side or my register and login. So that's one issue. Okay, and let's go to the login and see if it'll change anything. Okay. Oh, I did that wrong. Okay, I'm in. Now you notice that something disappeared. I no longer see my tasks. Okay. I, this still functions. I can go back. So I've got some issues here to resolve still. That's okay. We're getting close. Um, but one thing is I've, I've actually got to go to my, uh, tasks JS and do a little bit of updating as well. Okay. Because, uh, not that one there. Um, this one. Okay, so I need to get in and, and do a little bit of updating on that one. Okay, so if we look at our index view where we're actually locating the uh, the nav bar, uh, I've got to do I've got to put some information about um, what's going on inside that that view as well. We've never talked about where the user is. So if I go to our uh, get tasks index view. And I go down here and you look at this, uh, this JSON stuff here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a comma. I'm going to go down and say user. Okay. And that's going to be, uh, required. Okay. Dot user. Let's see if it pops up. Okay. I know I see I've got a little bit of an issue. Let me just keep going with this. But for now, let's just go in and give this a try. Okay. Uh, it looks like my connection, uh, to Mongo is still good. So, uh, let's, let's refresh this. It, see, it kicked me out. So I'll log back in. Okay. So, uh, we're getting better. Uh, you can see that my login is right here. Uh, and then the log out button appears. Okay. So we're, we're getting a little bit closer to where we want to be. Okay. So I'm, I'm there, but what happens now if I say, uh, okay, add a task, notice that I disappeared from the bar. Okay. So if I go back, um, about I'm disappearing again. Okay, so I, I seem to only be persisting on, on the nav bar in this particular tasks view. So I'm going to have to go in and uh, have a look at what's going on there too. So what I'm going to end up having to do is, is adding this uh, to a bunch of different views. Okay, so for example, when I go down below to, uh, we look at uh, tasks and view. Okay, what I'm going to have to do is... Uh, put this in here. Um, how do I want to do this? Uh, yeah. Uh, is that right? Yeah. Uh, sorry, my, uh, it's popping up there. I'm going to have to do this. 
Um, user uh, required task. So I should have just copy and pasted that dot user. Okay, and I'll bring this up here like that. Better formatting. Okay, so what I'll end up actually doing is let me just take that. So when I put it in my other views. So I'm going to actually have to go to my uh, my get tasks. Okay, and it's already uh, everything's all kind of set up for us right now anyway. So what I'll do is I'll do a comma and then this will just be user. Uh, there. So it should go to all of the different views that we're, we've been looking at, right? I'm still getting my connection, so I don't think there's any errors. So let's go out and have a look. Okay. So, um, if I go to here, okay, it's still not up, uh, done updating. It logged me out. So let me log back in. Okay, so I'm I'm good here. Uh, if I go here, I'm still in there. That's good. Uh, let's go back to tasks. Uh, let's try and do an edit. And you notice I'm being persisted over in the edit as well. There's actually one more place I need to do this. Uh, and that is in my about page. Okay, and I just realized I, I haven't actually added it to my about page. So uh, I'm up here. It looks like, uh, where are we? Uh, I'm right in here on my about. Okay, and I don't want to actually put it in the about so much as I want to put it in uh, right here after where my JSON title says task manager. So I'll do a comma, enter, and we'll do user uh, dot. Okay, and that should do it there. Sorry, I was doing that in home, but I also need to do that in the about. So up here is the home. Uh, and where am I going to put this? Uh, it looks like I, I probably want to do this. Okay, I'm going to copy this uh, right after here. Okay, and I'm going to put that in there as well. Uh, it's throwing me an error, and I'm not sure why. Let me just have a quick look. Yes, it's because I don't need this. Okay, let's see if it comes back. Uh, I did get a crash because of that one error, but uh, it should work now. There, it's come back, and I'm probably going to have to log in. Of course, I've got to log in. Okay, I logged in and I selected the about and it actually worked. The other thing was the home button too. I had to make sure that I, when I clicked on the task manager V2, that it actually persisted there. So about works, uh, if I go to tasks, I go to edit, um, tasks, uh, add, it's all persisting exactly how I want it to do. The other thing I got to do now, I think finally is just figure out why the heck this, uh, isn't going over there. So I guess this uh, M Y two just isn't going to cut it. So we're going to do uh, M L, and you can see down here auto. Let's give this a try. Okay, save, uh, go back, do a refresh, and you can see that it actually went way over to the right, which is what we were hoping for. Uh, so if we go to tasks, it's still persisting. Yeah, it's staying there the whole time. Uh, interesting. Now that's pretty good. Okay. The last final thing that I want to do is, uh, compare when somebody logs in or sorry, not log in when somebody registers, uh, and they're asked to put in a password and then put in a confirmatory password to make sure that they match. That's the last thing I want to do. I just want to go in and make sure that those two passwords match. 
Now the place I'm going to do that, I'm just going to do it with plain uh, JavaScript. So we go to our public JavaScript's uh, scripts.js file. This is where I'm going to do it. So I've got an, a note here that says uh, compare passwords when register. So this is a function and we're going to call uh, compare passwords. Okay. And of course we have to create this, right? So we have two variables var uh, pw1 and we got to go get it. So doc document dot get element by ID and it's going to be a uh, password and dot value. Okay. And then this not value of just value. Okay. And then uh, going to need the same thing for password two. Okay. And we'll call this password two. Okay. And this one is going to actually say confirm. You can see it pop up there. Save that. So I actually need to be able to put out a message if they don't match. So let's go with var uh, pwmsg. And that's going to be a document dot get element by ID. And in here, we're going to say um, password uh, msg. Okay, we don't have it yet. We've got to go to the form and actually put that in there. So basically, we've got password one, password two. Conf we're going to confirm whether or not they match uh, and then put out a message. So what I'll do is a comparison and uh, right in here, my computer's frozen for a second. Let's wait till it comes back there. So we're going to do an if. Oh, so if um, PW1 does not equal PW2, okay, then what? Uh, we're going to do a PW, uh, or PW message dot inner, uh, inner HTML. And it's going to be a uh, uh, password, uh, passwords do not match. Okay. And then uh, what's the other one? PW, PW message uh, dot class. Uh, class name. Okay. And it'll be uh, text dot danger. So this is just uh, going to make it red. Okay. So that it's very, very obvious to, uh, to the user. Okay. Uh, what else do I need to add? Okay. So there's one more thing I have to do here is I've got to do a return uh, false. Okay. And then we need to go into uh, else. So what happens next? Okay, and this is going to be uh, PW message uh, is going to be inner HTML. And that's going to equal uh, just a couple of quotations. But here I want to return a true. Okay. So in order to kind of invoke some of this stuff, we have to go to our registration HBS. Okay. Or register. And I'm going to go right after I do the, uh, the regular expression line. So on minus line 15, and I'm going to do a span. Okay. Uh, okay. There it is a span and we'll say ID equals, um, it's PWMSG. Okay, and we'll close that out and it should create the span. So then we want to go to the button, uh, which is, um, so we're right in here. So just before register, 
Okay, uh, right at this point here, right after the uh, offset two, we're gonna do on click. And that's gonna be uh, return. Uh, we want to call the actual uh, function. So it was compare. See right there, passwords. So compare passwords. Okay, and there. So that's on the registration button. Okay. So this is going to return a true or false. And if it returns a false, we cancel the uh, submission. Okay. So the other place we're going to want this is also on the uh, key up button. So your up uh, arrow. So that's going to be uh, right in the confirm button. So uh, right after required, we're going to say, uh, let's put in a space on key. You can see here on key up and we're going to do return uh, compare passwords. Okay. That's the other spot that we're going to put that in there. I'm going to save that. You must have the return word in there because, uh, it'll submit your form anyway. If you, if you try to do this and don't have the return keyword in there. So I'm actually going to go and uh, test this out. Let's see what happens. Okay. So I'm going to log out and I'm going to try to register. Uh, just go with Tom. Uh, A, B, C, one, two, three. Okay. Uh, password doesn't match because I haven't actually tried yet. Um, so what I did is I actually hit the, uh, tab key on that one. So A, B, C, uh, one, two, three, four exclamation. And it says passwords do not match. Okay. So I'll try to register and it's not, it's not letting me, uh, register that. Okay. So I'll have to go in and try to make a matching one so that it'll actually work. So anyway, uh, I'm, I'm hoping this isn't turning into one of my other marathon sessions of uh, video. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with everything that we've done today. Uh, and I'm actually going to end the video there. Um, because I'm actually absolutely exhausted and I'm sure you will be at the end of this. So anyway, thanks for watching and, uh, I'm going to see you in the next video. Okay. Thanks.